so it gave me a lot of difficulties during teaching. Most of my work has already been stopped. I can't do things as I used to do when I was healthy, and therefore it has costed me a lot. I went to so many hospitals. I have medical form, as you can see, from different hospitals, and uh, so many prayers have been held, but no improvement. So that is why the Holy Spirit told me that just go to Prophet T.B. Joshua, where you get your healing. And I hope I'm in the right place. I will get healed in Jesus' name. We pray with you that the Lord Almighty will set you free in Jesus' name. I believe so. Amen. I have a stiff neck due to cervical spondylosis. I'm using a neck collar. For the last 12 years, I've been experiencing a stiff neck. Man of God helped me. It has stopped me from all my activities. I cannot do the work that I used to do when I was still healthy. Man of God, please help me. When you receive your healing, come on. Amen. You say, we are healed, not I'm healed. I'm healed. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you receive your healing now, when you want to testify, you say, we are healed, including Timmy Joshua. We are healed. Because you people normally say, I'm healed, I'm healed. I say, we too, we are not healed. We are healed. We <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> big, big man, you are not serious. Okay, thank you. Podemos ver la administración en Jesús. Remove it. Okay, turn your neck. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. Fellow you can't help me. Este hombre ha sido recibido sanidad. Are you removing me from the healing? This, this man is very stubborn. I say we are here. You say I'm here. Huh? When you say we are here, me, my, I will get my healing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Continue checking until you know the right thing to say. Ah, we have this time before now. We are going. Uh -uh. Since, since, since 1997, we have been sent to kill him. This is a different man. Why? Uh, it's, it's, it's a very strong man. We would have killed him. We would have killed him. But the bridge was right. Which thing is you give him? They want to kill him because of education. Why? Who are you? Who are you in this place? Who are you? I'm, I'm losing Faro. I'm losing Faro. No, I'm losing Faro. You see, you see. Can you carry me to my head? Okay, come on. Que este hombre ha sido libre y ha sido sano de rigidez en su cuello. Uh -huh. What do you want to say now? Please. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Brethren, help me. Thank you, God, for having healed me from the long trouble. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Put your hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That was a miraculous healing that took place in the life of our brother, but it's good that we hear directly from him as he's here in our midst, hill and hurtsy to the glory of God. So you're very much welcome once again to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Jesus' name. Please introduce yourself, tell us your name, where you're from, and go on to share with us your wonderful testimony. Emmanuel, praise God. I'm Ogwal Vincent from Uganda. The pro I'm a teacher by profession, I'm a degree holder, Bachelor of Art with Education. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of All Nations was the problem of stiff neck. I've been using a neck collar for some good time. The whole thing started in 2006. I just woke up in the morning from nowhere, I found there was a a little bit of a mild pain on the neck. And whenever I could want to take I mean, to turn my neck like this, I would hear some cracking sound on my neck. At first I thought that was something mild. I thought maybe in the previous night I didn't sleep well. 
So I went and just bought a pain balm. I think I thought it was something minor. I started ministering it, massaging it, but there was no solution. So I developed the idea of going to the hospital. But when I went there, they carried, they they requested for X-ray, and the X-ray result came out and showed that uh, my problem was the stiffness was being caused by cervical spondylosis. When they asked the doctor, because as a, a teacher, I'm not a medical personnel, I didn't know what it meant. He told me there is some bit of gap in the bones of the neck. I said, wow, what do you know the solution? The doctor put me in physiotherapy with some drugs. Praise God. But even then, when I came back, I started using it. In a week, I would go once for physiotherapy, but there was no lasting solution. So I thought of going for prayers. Actually, I held prayers several times, more than 10 times. I would call evangelists to my place, and different evangelists would come to my place, but there was no solution. So for how many years did you suffer this problem? 12 years, since 2006 up to date. So we just heard from the brother? I mean, after the... I came to Emmanuel TV. Okay, we heard from the brother who came all the way from Uganda uh, to the Synagogue Church of All Nations with a terrible problem uh, of stiff neck due to cervical spondylosis, which he suffered since 2006, as he said, and it caused him a lot of uh, severe pains, discomfort. Even as an educationist, uh, he could not discharge his duties effectively, and he had to go on a sick leave when he could not, no longer manage uh, the terrible sickness uh, he was in. So he said uh, that was the problem he was battling with for 12 years and going to the hospital after taking many medication and without any solution the doctor finally recommended what device did the doctor now finally recommend that you use when the medications did not work out when the medication could not work out i'd been watching emmanuel tv for so long and uh, what came to my mind i told my family members said this thing has lasted for long and there's no lasting solution. I prayed, I went to Osbury Hospital. And uh, in next year, again, before I came here, I so developed my... been watching Emmanuel TV for long, and you decided to come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. So tell us what happened when you came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, and the prophet, that is Prophet T.B. Joshua, prayed for you. Can you just share your experience when, with us? When I came to Synagogue Church of All Nations, I was opportune to be put on the prayer line. When the man of God came and was approaching me, from nowhere, children of God, I found a certain force was coming to me and was shaking my neck, overpowered me. And I, I couldn't believe I was the one. So when I was being asked by the man of God, that's the only thing, that my statement was not corresponding. My statement was, not in line with what you are, because I was not myself, because there was a certain force that came and overpowered me, much as I was talking, I was not myself, children of God. So after, so, by, after that prayer and manifestation of that evil spirit, what finally happened to so that neck, stiff neck, uh, caused by cervical postpondulosis, what finally happened after that prayer? When the man of God touched me, people of God, I came so much overpowered, and I found myself down. From there, I could not even understand what happened. I just came to know when the man of God was telling me, please, rise up. When I, when I rose up, I tried to check on my neck. I found there was nothing. There was nothing. That cracking sound was not. I say, wow, I'm ill. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Yes, we all witnessed what's happened in the life of the brother a short while ago. Uh, as we can see on the screen of our television right now, when the man of God was praying for him, immediately he received that touch. I said the evil spirit in him started manifesting that is the cause of that problem was casted out of him. And immediately the root cause of this problem was chased out. He said he received his instant healing. And immediately he could turn his neck without any pain. Jesus granted him that perfect and complete healing. If you know that Jesus Christ, the master healer, is more than able to see you through whatever condition you are in today, let us put our hands together once again for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, once again, can you exercise your neck 
excise your neck and tell us how you're feeling. Emmanuel, you can see, I can turn. Those days I couldn't turn like this. I couldn't turn like this. And whenever I couldn't turn like this, you hear some cracking sound on the neck. But it's now very smooth. God, may God Hallelujah. Bless you. Put your hands together once again for Jesus. Yes, you know that not only did you receive your healing, deliverance also took place in your life. Because you saw a while ago on the screen of our television that after that touch from the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, that evil spirit in you started manifesting and confessing it was Lucifer and all the rest. What can you say about this? Yes, I do confirm this. Be before I fell sick, I started fe feeling that neck pain. I used to have terrible dreams. Sometimes in the night I would find myself in water, the snake chasing me, and of course... You people, when you talk about snake, you know it is Lucifer. And shortly after, I felt sick. So I would go into a terrible nightmare. The snake would be chasing me. I would find myself in a dream. I'm in water. And shortly after, that was when I saw, I started experiencing a neck on the, on the pain, on the, I mean a pain on the neck. Hmm. So this makes me confirm that there was Lucifer ever bringing all the kind of bad dreams, nightmare, and all that. May God bless you. But right now, what has happened to your life? How is your health right now? Your neck, how are you feeling right now after that prayer? My neck is now okay, children Hallelujah. of God. I don't have any problem at all, and I want to thank God. I want to thank God for having huge Emmanuel T.B. Joshua in me, and I say, may God bless him abundantly. Hallelujah. We can close to God Almighty. We know we have learned a lot of lessons from the testimony of our brother. We can see the reason why he, has, he went many places far and wide, uh, administered many medications, uh, used a neck collar. Uh, many things were applied, but there was no solution because his problem had become a curse. As man of God said, uh, that when it becomes a curse, only Jesus could have justly removed that curse. As he said, the problem started immediately after they started having that attack from the spirit of Lucifer. That was way back in 2006. And who could have justly healed him of that problem caused by Satan himself, only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we give glory to God Almighty for having set him free from that terrible problem he suffered for many years and granted him perfect and complete healing to the glory of God. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus. So we give glory to God Almighty and uh, we know that millions and millions are listening to your testimony right now and uh, they want to hear a word of advice from you. What do you want to tell the world about what God has done in your life? Children of God, let trust in God. We was, children of God, we could be having some of our, some of the people who are outside there using medical devices like neck collar, like the one I was using, lumbar corset, knee cap, knee brace. Please, trust in God. Because the Bible, God wants all of us, God always wants us to be physically, live physically ill and spiritually saved. Hallelujah. I pray that in case you're suffering and having such kind of problem like the one that I had, please, rush to synagogue and arena of liberty so that you when the man of God touch you, instantly you get your healing. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for that wonderful word of advice. Uh, we really appreciate that. As the brother has said, uh, those that may feel dejected, maybe having one sickness or the other out there, they should continue to trust in the goodness of God, knowing that it is the will of God to see us physically healed and spiritually saved. As I said, just run to God is more than able to see you. So we give glory to God Almighty for what he has done in your life. And remember that Jesus Christ has granted you this healing deliverance for the salvation of your soul. So may Sure you continue to follow him along the way, knowing that the state of being is as rewarding as living in tune with God's word. So once again, we appreciate God for what he has done in your life, and we think we deserve all the glory and adoration. So if you know this, put your hands together once again for the miracle working God. Nous allons entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cet homme qui a reçu sa guérison la semaine dernière. Il est venu à la synagogue de tout l'ancien avec un problème de raideur de cou dû à la spondylose cervicale. Il a dit que tout a commencé lorsqu'un matin il s'est réveillé, il a senti une petite douleur. Il n'y a pas pris garde. Et la douleur après a commencé à s'amplifier et à développer justement cette raideur du cou. Il a dû aller à l'hôpital et c'est là que le médecin lui a dit qu'il souffrait de la spondylose cervicale. Il a dit qu'il souffrait de ce problème depuis l'année 2006. Cela fait 12 ans qu'il souffrait de ce problème, qu'il ne trouvait aucune solution à ce problème. Aller voir les docteurs, aller voir les mêmes les tradis 
les praticiens sans trouver de solution à son problème. Mais étant venu à la synagogue de toutes les nations la semaine dernière, l'homme de Dieu a prié pour lui. Effectivement, il a dit qu'il a senti vraiment son corps vibrer, trembler. Il a dit que lorsqu'il a enlevé sa minière, il a réalisé qu'il peut tourner son cou à droite à gauche, en haut et en bas, sans sentir des craquements au niveau de son cou. Il était complètement guéri. Il a dit qu'il a reçu aussi la délivrance, qu'il a l'habitude de rêver, de voir des serpents et toutes sortes d'êtres euh, étranges dans ses rêves. Il a dit que vraiment l'esprit de Lucifer est sorti de lui et rend toute la gloire Dieu, qu'il est complètement libre, il n'a plus de cauchemar, il est complètement guéri pour la gloire de Dieu. Escuchamos el maravilloso testimonio de sanidad y liberación. Este hombre nos cuenta que se presentó a la sinagoga y les a todas las naciones el domingo pasado con un problema en rigidez en su cuello. Él nos dice que inmediatamente el hombre de Dios oró por él. Él sintió que todo su cuerpo se, eh, tenía una fluidez de energía, de electricidad, y él empezó a agitarse fuertemente y también recibió liberación. Él nos cuenta que por mucho tiempo estuvo eh, teniendo pesadillas, malos sueños donde tenía encuentros con espíritus malignos y también nos cuenta que este problema de rigidez en su cuello afectó su vida, que de un momento a otro él se levantó con este dolor y no podía explicarlo. Él duró con este eh, a, padecimiento por más de 12 años, pero podemos ver en pantalla que eh, este hombre recibió su liberación y su sanidad y hoy está aquí compartiéndole a todo el mundo de la bondad del Señor Jesucristo. Continuamos. Mrs. Rachel Ogong. I'm 53 years of age, living in UK, but originally from Uganda. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of All Nations today is this prolapse with canal sterosis, eh? and I'm using crutches for walking and a lambocosi for supporting my back. And I'm, I've been booked for an operation. I was at work, I got up from my desk, and then I just had something make noise on my back. And I didn't know it was my back problem that was giving way. I decided to go to St. Thomas Hospital in London, and I was given painkillers. There was no improvement. Two days later, I went to see my general practitioner, who also gave me some painkillers and told me I had uh, a sciatic nerve problem, but no, no improvement. Then I decided to come to Uganda because I was due to come to Scone. So when I came to Uganda, the situation wasn't. We went to Nakasero Hospital. I did the MRI, which you can see on the screen, and they found out that my disc, the lower part of the disc was prolapsed here. Yeah. Since this problem happened, I cannot do anything for myself. I cannot get up, I cannot wash, I cannot do completely, I'm, I'm helpless. 
I have to be helped to do everything. I can't do anything for myself, neither can I even walk. I use crutches for walking. The lumbar corset, I use it for supporting my back because if I don't use it, there's too much pain that I can't bear the pain. So with it, it helps me support my back. This one is a heater blanket. When I had serious back problem, I would put it on my back and then turn it on the electricity. When I turn it on and then set it up, it sort of cools the pain on my back and I'm able to sleep a bit. Without this, I could not sleep at all. I believe this is my last bus stop and I believe Jesus is the healer. He will definitely heal me. That is why I came here. I was booked for an operation and I said no. Before I can go for an operation, I need to go to Synagogue Church of All Nations. And that is why I'm here. Because I trust God is going to heal me here today. Uh, my name is Dr. David Ogong. I'm from Uganda. Uh, this is my wife, Rachel Ogong. And she's, uh, she's, she's affected with uh, uh, disc prolapse, with canal stenosis. This has affected her ability to walk normally. She uh, basically cannot support herself. She cannot put her legs down and walk like a normal person. So she has to be helped in all ways, uh, right from uh, getting out of bed to walking, even sitting down, going to the bathroom, going to the toilet. She needs to be helped. And without the aid of crutches, she cannot stand on her own. So she needs the crutches to be able to move around. Because she cannot do anything on her own, uh, all the attention now needs to be given to her so it takes a lot of time instead of doing other things that well, you would do normally you have to now be attending to her so it has slowed us down generally it has slowed us in many ways uh, because a lot of the activities she cannot cook we have to find a way of cooking for her she cannot wash her clothes she cannot bathe by herself everything is done for her so it has slowed us down as a family Jesus is the master healer and we believe that we are in the reign of liberty and with just a touch from the servant of God, she will be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray and believe with you that God Almighty is going to heal your wife and deliver her from this problem in Jesus' name. Amen. Man of God, I'm in serious pain. Please help me. The thing in front of me, I use it to warm my back at least so that I can have some sleep. If I don't do that, I can't sleep at all. Vemos esta mujer recibiendo sanidad en el nombre de Jesús y un problema en su columna vertebral. Là. La parole de Dieu a l'œuvre dans l'esprit. Va, marche. L'homme de Dieu dit l'ordre de bouger. Les ténèbres, cette femme, regarde. With just a touch from Jesus Christ, and she rises to her feet. In simple parole, Lord Jesus. Okay, you can go. Walk majestically, go. Envoyez la parole et le guérit. Thank you, Jesus. We are here. Thank you, Jesus. I can walk now. Thank you, Jesus. I no longer need crutches. Thank you, Jesus. Wow! Put your hands together beautifully. Indeed, that was a wonderful miracle that God Almighty wrought in the life of our sister. And she's here today to the glory of God to share her wonderful testimony. Yes, you're welcome, Mother. 
Yes, can you tell us your name and share with us your wonderful testimony? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, children of God. My name's uh, Mrs. Rachel Gong, living in London, but originally from Uganda. I would like to thank God, thank the man of God for what happened to me last week. I came here with pain. I came here unable to walk. All this started at work. I was at work, I got out of my desk. I wanted to go to the restroom. And when I got up, I heard a sound in my back saying, treat. And I thought to myself, what is this? So I went to the restroom. When I got to the restroom, I could not walk. I stayed for about 20 minutes, came back to my desk. The pain continued. I stayed there up to 5.30, went back home. On, on Thursday, I thought it would improve. Came to work, by, but by 2.30, I could not do anything completely. I retired and went back home. On Friday, I had a meeting to attend. I had no choice, but I had to go for the meeting. I was supposed to drive, but I could not drive. So I decided to call a Uber. All this happened in UK. So when the man came with his car, he stopped right in front of me, expecting me to lift my leg and get onto the car. But he looked at me and puzzled, not wondering why isn't this woman jumping on the car. I could not lift my leg. I couldn't move. So eventually I fall. I lifted my right leg and then lifted my left leg and got onto the car. I went for the meeting. From the meeting, I was there by body. Spiritually, I was in too much pain. I could not do anything. I didn't even understand one thing. Came back home. No, I didn't come back home. So after the meeting, I called my sister-in-law to come and pick me because I could not walk. She said, Rachel, I can't take you home right now. I have to take you to accident and emergency. So she decided to take me to St. Thomas Hospital in London. Lucky enough, when we got to the car park, because I couldn't walk, there was a porter who had just dropped somebody. So my sister-in-law asked him to drop me to the accident and emergency. The doctor attended to me, but on attending to me, he told me, you have what we call sciatica. I'm going to give you strong painkillers. About 48 hours from now, you should be okay. And because I could not walk, he gave me crutches as well for coming back home. I came back home. Saturday, the pain didn't stop. Sunday, it intensified. Monday was a bank holiday. Tuesday, I decided to go and see my general practitioner. So when I went to see him, he straight away referred me for MRI test. So he told me, go back home, and you should receive a phone call from us within today or tomorrow. And I asked, because I was now off at work, I asked him if he could give me a medical certificate. Then he gave me three weeks. So I asked him, why are you giving me three weeks? Because in UK, for you to get even two weeks, you have to be really sick. So the, the general practitioner told me that you do not know the severity of your sickness. So I went back home. That was on Tuesday. There was no phone call. I didn't get a letter. On Thursday, my husband decided that since we're supposed to go to Scone, you might as well just come back to Uganda. And then from Uganda, we shall go to Scone because we know God is the healer and God is the final decision. So I, we, on Friday, I left UK for Uganda. I could not walk. They had to use, I had to use a wheelchair to be taken into the plane. From, from Nairobi as well, they had to use a wheelchair to move me from one plane to the other. Uganda, I could not get out of the plane. They had to use a wheelchair to move me. So on getting to Uganda, we decided to go and see the doctor. He also referred me for MRI. That's the one you saw on the screen. And after the results came out, he booked me for an appointment. But because we had already known that we were coming to Scone, and we knew that God is the final decider, I said to myself, I am not going for an operation. I need to go to Scone, and I need to go for my healing. And I definitely knew I was going to get my healing in Jesus' name.
Okay, to the glory of God, madam, can you tell us when you were facing those problems and you went to the hospital, what were the things that were recommended for you and were you able to have a solution and how did this problem affect your daily activities? When I went to hospital, first of all, because I could not walk, I was given crutches for walking. And secondly, because I had serious back pain, I was given a lambocosi to support my back and then I was recommended a, a heat blanket. That one, I would put it on my back, and when I am lying on my back, it sort of numbs the pain down. But there was no, I was still in pain. There was no solution at all. Mm. And what about your daily activities? Were you able to go about your daily activities? I could not do nothing as you saw myself on the screen. Everything had to be done for me. I remember on the third day, I couldn't even turn and I asked my daughter, can you just turn me? The girl is just 17 years old. And because I'm big, she's small, she had to use a bed sheet to pull me to turn me over. And she was like, mommy, you are just three days sick and you're already asking me to turn me. That's how bad it was. Mm. And as per your profession, what do you do for a living? I work with the post office in UK. Okay, so that affect, I mean, your situation affected you, you couldn't move around to carry out your daily activities? I couldn't do anything completely because from the third day I was completely useless. I should say useless. Why even going to bed, somebody has to help you. The only thing I could do because my aunts were able to put food in my mouth, that's all I could do. But other than that, I could not do anything completely. Wow. So now tell us, on that fateful day when you came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, what happened? On that faithful day when I came to Synagogue Church of All Nations, I was privileged to, put, to be put on the prayer line. As soon as the man of God came to me, he touched my left leg first and then touched my, and I felt some sensation from down up and this side as well from down up. And then he touched my, my right elbow. And when he touched my right elbow, I felt something like electric heat going right from up up to down. That is why you saw me shaking. The pain was too much. But soon after, I felt something leave me. I, before I was so heavy and all of a sudden, I became light. I thank God for that. Hands together for Jesus Christ. So now, as we watch on the screen, what now happened when you stood up? When I stood up, I was able to walk. I don't know whether you've ever imagined yourself being in crutches and then all of a sudden you're back on your two feet. Mm. That was the excitement I had. I thank God for all that. Wow. We thank God Almighty for that, that beautiful miracle that happened in your life. And to the glory of God, can you move around now? Let's see you, how you are right now, what the, I mean, the things that you can do now. Children of God, I just want to see you, me. I want you all to see me parading this church. This is what I never used to do. I used to take it for granted. God is good. Indeed, God Almighty is good, and all the time, yes, we want to hear your response. Remember what the man of God said last Sunday, as she was talking, I am healed, you too, you are healed. The fact that you are not here standing, testifying, God has done something in your life as well. So let us rejoice along with her. Put your hands together beautifully for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow, to the glory of God, madam, we thank God for what God has done in your life, and we know many people are listening to you, and they also, they might have that similar problem you had before. So what advice do you have for them? Oh, before I can give any advice, I would like to thank God Almighty for healing me. I also want to thank the man of God for availing himself to be used by God. May the Almighty Lord continue to bless you and your ministry in Jesus' name. And I also want to thank all the evangelists and all the workers that have supported Prophet T.B. Joshua. God bless you all. I also want to thank those who helped me when I was sick. God bless you all. 
My word of advice comes from the book of Jeremiah 33, verse 3. It says, Call upon me, and I will answer you, and see the great mighty works that I can do. Our man of God always says, Rejoice with those who rejoice. As you rejoice with me today, you will receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. You, you too will get your breakthrough, your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Almighty Lord continue to bless you and guide you. God bless you all. Thank you. Wow. Put your hands together for Jesus. Wow. We thank you very much for that a wonderful prayer and advice. And we also want to enjoin you that uh, you should stand closer to God and make God's word the standard for your life. Trust in him, believing that God Almighty is able in all ways. Because the greatest decision you can make in life is to put your trust in God Almighty. And remember the healing that you have received is not an end in itself, but it means to an end, which is the salvation of your your soul. So go and make us what the standard for your life so that that healing will remain permanent in Jesus name. Amen. Y hemos escuchado el maravilloso testimonio de esta mujer ugandesa, ella es residente en Londres y esta mujer llegó a la sinagoga Iglesia de todas las naciones con un tremendo problema de dificultad para caminar, usando unas moletas y un corsé lumbar. Ella sufría de un, por, de un prolapso discal en su columna vertebral, así como estenosis. Estaba anotada ya para una operación, sufría de muchísimo dolor y no podía hacer ninguna de sus actividades diarias, no podía trabajar, ni siquiera podía asearse o ir al baño por sí misma, tenía que recibir ayuda de la familia. Ella estaba sumida en un tremendo dolor. Eh, esto le sucedió súbitamente yendo a una reunión de trabajo en Londres. De allí la desplazaron a un hospital y finalmente decidieron llevarla a Uganda, desde donde se desplazó directamente aquí a la Escoan y recibió su sanidad. Ella nos cuenta que llegó con muchísima dificultad, con mucho dolor, apoyada en sus muletas y que recibió la oración del profeta Tibi Joshua. Sintió una descarga eléctrica pasar por toda su columna, por todo su cuerpo. Eh, inmediatamente se sintió ligera y sin ningún dolor. Hoy está aquí para testificar para la gloria de Dios de su completa sanidad y liberación en el nombre de Jesús. Ella nos recomienda que acudamos siempre al gran sanador, que tengamos fe y que nos regocijemos con aquellos que se gozan, porque a través de ese gozo podremos recibir nuestra propia sanidad y nuestro propio milagro y liberación en el poderoso nombre de Jesús. Así que damos toda la gloria a Dios por este maravilloso testimonio de sanidad. Vous venez d'entendre le témoignage merveilleux de cette femme qui s'appelle Rachel Ogon et nous dit qu'elle vient du Royaume-Uni, originaire de l'Ouganda. Elle dit que l'histoire de ses problèmes a commencé un jour alors qu'elle marchait et elle a entendu un craquement soudain dans ses os. Et depuis cet instant-là, les douleurs ont commencé, des douleurs extrêmement pénibles. Et tout d'un coup, elle n'arrivait plus à marcher car les douleurs étaient insoutenables, tellement pénibles, qu'elle a dû appeler immédiatement quelqu'un à l'aide, un de ses voisins, pour venir la chercher. Mais quand ils sont venus la chercher, ils ont conduit directement à l'hôpital quand on vu l'état dans lequel elle était, incapable de marcher. Dès qu'elle est arrivée à l'hôpital, le diagnostic a été précis, elle a souffert d'un tassement des vertèbres, elle avait un problème dans le conduit de la colonne vertébrale et ça a fait sa marche et sa stature. Les médecins n'avaient rien d'autre à les préconiser que des antidouleurs et une paire de béquilles pour l'aider à marcher, lui conseillant que dans 48 heures tout serait fini. Mais bien au contraire, la douleur s'est intensifiée. Elle est retournée voir un médecin qui a préconisé de faire un scanner. Et là, ils ont trouvé que le problème était vraiment très très sérieux. Elle a pris l'avion pour venir en Ouganda dans son pays d'origine où elle a rencontré un médecin qui a aussi préconisé la même solution. En fin, en fin de compte, on lui a donné un corse lombaire, on lui a donné des genouillères, elle prend un, des, des, une couverture chauffante et un coussin chauffant pour soulager la douleur quand elle s'assit. Mais elle s'est dit, si je vais à la synagogue, Dieu va me guérir. Donc elle a refusé l'opération, elle a décidé de venir dans l'arène de la liberté chercher le secours qui vient du Seigneur. Lorsqu'elle est venue, elle a eu la grâce d'être admise sur la prière et lorsque l'homme de Dieu l'a touchée, elle a senti un objet comme un mouvement électrique dans son corps. Elle a tressailli de tout son corps, elle a senti que quelque chose l'a quitté et s'est senti légère. L'homme de Dieu a dit, lève-toi, elle se levait, elle a commencé à marcher. La liberté retrouvée, restaurée, comme si elle n'a jamais été malade. Vous l'avez vu marcher, magique. 
majestueusement, preuve que Jésus-Christ l'a visité et touché. Le conseil qu'elle donne à tout le monde en Jérémie 33, 3, le Seigneur dit, invoque moi je te répondrai, je te montrerai des choses cachées que tu ne connais pas. Son conseil à tous ceux qui regardent, réjouissez-vous avec elle, car lorsque vous réjouissez avec ceux qui se réjouissent, Dieu va vous guérir, Dieu va vous toucher, Dieu va vous délivrer. Que le Seigneur vous bénisse. Brother, can I talk to you? Where is your wife? You have a very hot clash with your wife. It's true, man of God. Very, very hot clash. It's true. In the war, we call it abomination. It's true. This is your wife? Yes, man of God. You are the wife? Yes, man of God. Why do you allow your appearance to deceive you? When you look at the mirror, you look beautiful, you allow that to deceive you. You allow your appearance to deceive you and you want to destroy your marriage. Yes, man of God. What you did is bad. Yes, man of God. I hope you have confessed to him. Yes, man of God. I want to be part of this family. Listen. So it is Satan that wants to destroy your home. It's not her. Amen. You know I was saying something that begin to reject any torture yes, from your enemy of your soul. It is enemy of our soul that torture with the word depressed. Ah, this man is, I'm like a complexion, I'm a beautiful woman, and the da and the da the da da This is your wife. Amen. What happened, happened to destroy this marriage? Anything close to Jesus, Receive attack. Amen. Thank you, man. She has confessed to you what I said. It's a dirty thing. When I was there, I just saw a very hot situation in the marriage. Don't listen to your people. Listen to God. Don't listen to Mr. T.B. Joshua. Listen to Prophet T.B. Joshua. Amen. You did this stupid thing on your street. It's not a distance on the street. This is your wife. You cannot get any other woman. This is your father. If this man listens to God, it's no longer only your husband, but your father. Yes, daddy. Because he has discretion. He can say, he will not take what God says. He will take what his family is and says. Probably this is shame, but he wants to listen to God. Yes, daddy. This is your father. Yes, daddy. Shall we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle working God? That was exactly how the prophecy came to being. And of course, only Jesus Christ can justly do it. The marriage that was at the verge of divorce and separation. What a manner of restoration. So right now, let's listen to the couple. They're here before us. And God bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. So I welcome you in Jesus' name. Could you introduce yourself to us and also who is the woman next to you and what you have to say about the prophecy? Uh, my name is uh, Alex Chiteta. Uh, the woman beside me is my wife. Uh, we are coming from uh, Zambia. We are coming from Zambia. So last week, Sunday, the man of God located me and he prophesied into my life. He asked me, where is your wife? And uh, I, did not know, I did not know where she was, so she came, and the man of God says, this is your wife. And I agreed, yes, she's my wife. So the man of God says, what happened in your marriage was an attack from Satan. 
So I agree it was an attack from Satan. So we've not been together for one year, six months. So the man of God said, this is your wife. She has apologized, whatever she did. So you have to forgive her. Okay, now let's take it from the prophecy. How can you confirm the prophecy to be true? What was the incident? How did it all happen? Okay, the prophecy is true. Uh, it all started way back uh, in 2016 when we separated because we were married when we were still young and I knew her very well and understood her. So I noticed that there are some things that begin to change in, in her, the way she reacts and the way she does her things. I was expecting that she's seeing someone else. So being an IT personnel, I did not want to accuse her, so I take it upon myself to say, let me find out really what is happening. Then I, I, I downloaded a software in her phone that allowed me to have uh, access of everything that is happening to her phone. Wherever she's communicating with, wherever she's chatting with, I was able to know. So as time goes on, I begin to realize that she was seeing someone for real. Then I confronted her. She accepted. She said, this is true. And I was, uh, I was furious. I was hungry. Uh, so I decided to say, if it is like this, then you have to pack and go your way. So we separated. And then this is now almost one year, six months. We've been apart. So last week, when the man of God located us, and prophesied into my life and he told me that it was an attack from Satan. He says that to anything that is close to God receives attacks. So I begin to understand that it was an attack for real. So after that we are prayed for and we are delivered and I begin to have the same affection I had some time back when we are just newly married. So every hunger I had, every pain I had, I could not be able to sit with her or talk, for, for, talk together with her. I couldn't do that because I was furious. But after the deliverance and the prophets from the man of God, my heart has been relieved and uh, I'm able to, to sit down with her and talk to her. We are now together as husband and wife. That is not enough for Jesus Christ. Put your hands together beautifully for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has restored this marriage to the glory of God. As you can see on the screen a moment ago, it is very obvious that the case was so serious to the extent that even being here in the service last Sunday, the husband was sitting apart while she was sitting apart. She's, the man has rightly said for one year and six months, they were, living in a, they were not living together. The wife was living separately. He was living separately. They were separated for one year and six months because of the incident. But upon their visitation to the synagogue, Church of All Nations, and after the message of prophecy, he had made the point clear that for the first time in one year and six months they could stand together talk together visit with one another that the anger that was in him is gone after the deliverance and that affection that was at the beginning of the marriage had been restored by the glory of god shall we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle working god you have said it all and right now with your experience and what really happened we believe you are in the best position to advise all as sundry what word of advice do you have to render Okay, so my advice to everyone out there is that uh, when your emotions is exhausted or when you are exhausted in this life due to circumstance or challenges, maybe in your marriage, your business, or your career, you should not give up because your emotions, they might lead you astray, but God will lead you in the right path. So it's better for us to find out really what God is speaking over your situation. Amen. You've heard it all. Indeed, it's a wonderful piece of advice, and it's all in tune with the Word of God that goes thus. When we make mistakes, as we all do, we should not run from God, but rather we should run to Him for an instant and immediate solution to all fundamental issues of life. And without much to do, we want to hear from your wife. 
Pastor Samana, welcome you in Jesus' name. Introduce yourself to us, who is the man next to you, and what you have to say about the prophecy and the incident that happened. My name is uh, Mrs. Mary Chiteta. And uh, the problem that brought us here uh, is that we've been separated for a year and six months. We've been separated uh, for a year and six months. We've been going to so many places to look for a solution, but none was found. So that's how I came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And uh, last Sunday in the service, uh, the man of God located my husband. And he told him that uh, he saw a hot clash, an abomination that happened in our marriage. So he asked my husband, where is your wife? That's when I came out. So I confirmed the prophecy to be true because it all started with me. Because we got married at an early stage and uh, we have three kids. So the spirit in me led me to start feeling like since I got married at an early stage, like I don't know what is on the other side of life. I don't know what's on the other side of a coin because a coin has got two sides and like i didn't feel comfortable with myself so i started going out to meet another man friend without my husband knowing without his consent so after my husband found out he confronted me and i confessed everything to him so that's how he got upset he said if it's like this you have to go back to your parents house so that's how I went back to my parents, and um, we've been separated for a year and six months. That's how we came here, and the man of God prophesied to us, he prayed for us, he delivered us, and he counseled us. And after the deliverance, uh, the affection, the love that I had for my husband, the love that we had when we were attained, it's back, and we are able to relate together even better. Shall we clap for wonderful Jesus Christ? We thank God Almighty for what He has done in your lives and what you have to say to your husband right now. Um, I would like to apologize to my husband because um, I've hurt him so much. I brought shame to him. I was supposed to be his wife, but I came, became his embarrassment. And I want to use this opportunity to apologize to him, to say that I am so sorry. Shall we clap for wonderful Jesus Christ? Only Jesus Christ can justly do this, and we thank God Almighty for this wonderful restoration. I will believe the Lord has done it, and it shall remain permanent. And finally, what word of advice do you have for all who are listening to you? Um, my word of advice to my fellow young ladies, my fellow women, is that uh, do not be moved by what is happening in the world out there. If you feel you're feeling emotions that are over you, that lead you astray, it is better you run to God. And uh, the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So let God lead us to be a good thing, a blessing to our husbands and not a burden. So let's run to God. Let's clap for wonderful Jesus Christ. That has been indeed a wonderful word of advice. We thank the Lord Jesus Christ who has used his able servant, Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua, to reconcile and bring his couple together once again and forever. I will pray as both of you go and make the word of God the standard for your lives. We pray that this reconciliation will remain permanent, your blessing will remain permanent, and always have it at the back of your mind that better is not good enough, the best is always yet to come. Shall we put our hands together beautifully for the miracle working God? témoignage de monsieur et madame Alex qui nous viennent de la Zambie. Le témoignage de comment Dieu a sauvé ce couple, ce mariage d'une destruction certaine. 
Tout a commencé lorsque le mari a dit qu'il a regardé qu'un qu incident s'est passé en 2016 qui a conduit à la séparation dans son couple. Il avait observé des changements de comportement dans la vie de son épouse et comme il était un ingénieur en électronique, il a commencé à surveiller à sa femme à distance, à écouter ses conversations à la... et s'est rendu compte que sa femme avait une rencontre avec quelqu'un. Il en a eu l'évidence un jour. Et lorsque ça s'est passé, ça a vraiment été quelque chose de difficile. Il a confronté sa femme qui a avoué les relations extra-conjugale. Et cela conduit à la rupture au mariage. La colère, l'amertume qu'il avait ne lui permettait plus de supporter la vie de sa femme. Ils se sont séparés. Ça faisait un an et demi qu'il était séparé, mais ils se sont retrouvés dans l'arène de la liberté dimanche dernier et l'homme de Dieu a donné une parole de prophétie révélant la source qui est dans la, dans la vie de ce couple. Il a prié pour ce couple et les a délivrés. L'esprit de rancœur et de non-pardon a été chassé et ce couple a retrouvé l'affection origine de leur mariage. Maintenant, ils se sont retrouvés, ils se sont réconciliés. Ça rappelle que Jésus est venu pour un ministère de restauration et de réconciliation. Le, le mari a dit que son cœur a été soulagé de toutes ses souffrances. Maintenant, l'affection qu'il a pour sa femme a été restaurée. Le couple a été uni maintenant et il donne des conseils à tout le monde que ce qui s'est passé, c'est une attaque du diable dans sa vie. Mais lorsque les choses du monde, les défis dans vos vies, dans vos affaires, dans vos foyers, peuvent vous conduire sur le chemin de la perdition, mais Dieu vous conduit dans le bon chemin. Faites confiance au Seigneur, comme la femme l'a dit, quels que soient les problèmes, courez vers Dieu, car il est la réponse à tous les problèmes fondamentaux de la vie. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Y escuchamos el maravilloso testimonio de restauración de este matrimonio que viene de Zambia. Ellos vinieron a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones el domingo pasado, tras haber estado separados durante un año y seis meses. Dios los, los localizó, localizó su caso a través del hombre de Dios, el profeta Tibi Joshua, y ellos recibieron una palabra profética. El hombre de Dios le preguntó al esposo, le dijo, ¿dónde está su, su esposa? ¿Es ella su esposa? Porque estoy viendo que algo, algo ha ocurrido en el matrimonio. Es una abominación. Hay algo que ya hizo que está mal, pero debe perdonarla. Usted debe perdonarla porque ella es su esposa. Este matrimonio es de Dios. Ellos han retomado hoy, gracias a la palabra profética, han podido retomar su relación. El afecto ha vuelto, esa pérdida de afecto de vida a una infidelidad que ella cometió, porque nos explica que se casó muy joven y enseguida se vio involucrada en otra relación. El afecto, gracias a la palabra profética que rompe todo yugo de Satanás, el afecto ha vuelto al matrimonio. Ellos han retomado su relación y ahora nos aconsejan que cuando haya problemas en el matrimonio, Dios tiene todas las soluciones, que corramos a Dios. Ella nos aconseja especialmente a las esposas jóvenes que cuando sientan que pierdan el afecto que corran hacia Jesucristo, que corran a Dios para recuperar ese afecto y estamos viendo para la gloria de Dios una vez más a nuestro Señor Jesucristo restaurando hogares, tenemos un maravilloso testimonio de restauración y seguimos adelante con más testimonios espectadores, manténgase conectados en el nombre de Jesús Like uh, you can love man yes. sexually, you can yes. love woman sexually. Yes, man of God. And your wife has been with you for some time, but is disappointed. Now. Yes, yes, man of God. Hallelujah! Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So the gentleman in question is here in our midst to share his confirmation of that prophetic word and also his life experience, one which we believe will serve as a great lesson to those present here and indeed to viewers all over the world. So sir, you are very welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, please introduce yourself to us and share with us the prophecy you received last week and the confirmation of that prophecy. Emmanuel. My name is Patrick Busima. I'm 45 years. I'm from Uganda. Uh, 
Before I confirm the prophecy, what I'm going to say today, I believe is going to help set many people free who are in the bondage of the confession I'm about to make. Uh, last Sunday during the service, a man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, the Spirit located me and he came to me and he prophesied that I have an attack of a man inside me that causes me to have sexual affection to both man and woman. And then he said, my wife is greatly disappointed. I confirm the prophecy to be true and I thank God who located me that day. And today, this morning, I am here to make a confession that will help to save many people who are in bondage without knowing. Well, it started way back when I was at the age of seven years, abused my, sexually abused by my elder brother. Since then, I got in a different 